Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wish to update the House on our economy in the midst of the war on COVID-19. The overall message is that times are tough, very tough. And there are mixed signals on our economy. The good news is that the Marape government's steady and responsible budget repair and reconstruction is protecting the budget and protecting the economy. We are delivering on our promises. Let me begin with the highlights from the 2020 final budget outcome, or FBO, and the 2021 mid-year economic and fiscal outlook, or MIFO. 2020 FBO. Mr. Speaker, the 2020 final budget outcome available on the Treasury website sets out how our budget performed as budgets around the world have been thrown into disarray because of the COVID-19 pandemic. It reveals that things turned out pretty close to what we predicted. We expected the deficit would be 2.7 billion kina worse due to COVID-19, rising from 4.6 billion kina to 7.3 billion. This is what happened, with total debt increasing to 40,168 million. Mr. Speaker, let me say that I am un uncomfortable with this high deficit level and its implications. But I take some comfort from independent responses to the FBO. The analysis by Kina Bank states, and I quote, this historically large deficit was not surprising amidst an unprecedented global recession, unquote. In addition, the Australian National University analysis states, and I quote again, PNG just ran its highest budget deficit ever. But that's a good thing, unquote. Independent analysts understand what had to be done, even if the opposition had no idea on what was required. The FBO indicates the predicted massive drop in domestic revenue did occur, although it was slightly less than expected. Specifically, total domestic revenue dropped by 2.5 billion kina instead of 2.7 billion, as we've been telling everybody from the 13.16 billion kina at the time of the 2020 budget to an outcome of 10,668 million or 10.6 billion kina. On the expenditure front, the initial plan was to absorb COVID-19 spending into the original 2020 budget expenditure estimate of 15,843 million kina. The actual outcome was extraordinarily close to this, 15,822 million kina, only a 0.13% difference. So easily the best managed expenditure budget in PNG history. The 2020 budget was delivered with even more structural changes than originally planned, despite COVID-19. Specifically, we reduced the 2020 operational budget from 12,160 million kina down to 11,913 million. Unexpected cost increases in the wages budget 
were more than fully offset by cuts in goods and services expenditure. Much more needs to be done to bring wage <clears throat> costs under control. But I was pleased that the figure is much more controlled than in previous years. There was also a pleasing increase in the capital budget from 3,683 million to 3,909 million kina, a very encouraging increase of over 25% in comparison to 2019. We are pumping out infrastructure, building new hospitals, new schools, new roads, new bridges, new wharves, you name it, we're building it. Not just in the last two and a half years, but will continue over the next five years. In addition, there continued to be a very rapid increase in dispersing concessional funds from international agencies such as the ADB, World Bank, and China due to the provision of counterpart funds, which increased from 1,365 million kina to 1,568 million or 0.2 billion kina. This is clever leveraging of our expenditure to kickstart very good capital projects. Good capital spending with high rates of return lifts our growth rate and the job and income opportunities for our people. This more rapid drawdown of concessional funding adds to our budget deficit. Overall, the change in our budget deficit of 2.7 billion kina compared to the 2020 budget was 2.5 billion kina less revenue and 0.2 billion more expenditure through this acceleration of capital expenditure projects. I am particularly pleased with the increase in the capital budget, the projects that it leads to, and the resultant employment and income generating opportunities that we have created. Mr. Speaker, the Marape government has managed the budget well in the worst economic conditions in a century. We have invested in a creative and responsible way that will help grow the economy for the foreseeable future. Independent domestic and international responses confirm that we are on the right track in dealing with the worst economic conditions that we've ever faced. Mr. Speaker, what a contrast with the irresponsible mismanagement of Peter O'Neill. 2021 Media Fiscal and Economic Outlook. The MAIFO, which is scheduled to be tabled in Parliament this session, is a continuation of good economic management and budget repair. Despite ongoing socio-economic turbulence, all the indicators, indications are that we are on course to deliver the 2021 budget repair exactly as expected. We are on track to cut the deficit to 6.61 billion kina in 2021, exactly the figure provided in the budget. Indeed, the slight growth expected in the kina size of the economy means that the budget deficit decreases slightly as a share of the economy, so down from 7.3 to 7.2 percent. Mr. Speaker, this is also an extraordinary result. Compared to the 2020 FBO outcome, we are on track to reduce the budget deficit from 8.9% in 2020 down to 7.2% in 2021. 
This is a very substantial fiscal adjustment of 1.7 percentage points in just one year. Most countries would take two or three years to achieve such a result. And we are doing it in a responsible way, cutting debt growth as quickly as possible whilst protecting core services such as health, education, and justice sectors, and increasing investment at the same time. This has brought increasing international confidence in the Marape government's economic performance, which is in turn allowing access to highly concessional financing to replace the expensive debt inflicted on the nation by the member for Yalabu Pangia. PNG's debt interest costs are decreasing under this government. In the first six months of 2021, interest costs were 1.01 billion kina, less than the debt interest costs paid in the first half of 2019 of 1.04 billion kina in the cowboy O'Neill years. Honorable, uh, Honorable Treasurer, Honorable Treasurer, I'm uh, Chair Bayami interrupting you here because he believe all Sam. Sam la olo, talk talk you all make him or Sam, he pass the name and he go finish me look him here. You talk talk longer, you talk Peter O'Neill. I think it's unparliamentary and it's dishonorable to you make him because at that time he was acting as the Prime Minister of this country and not as Peter O'Neill or member for Yalebu Pangia. So me will look at all statement blow you and me look at him. I think it's more personal and it's unparliamentary, but you must rephrase him good and talk him more same. So I'm concerned I'm not here, Honorable Treasurer, you may continue statement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I shall review my choice of words in my next state. Interest costs are now falling, freeing up funds for vital investments. The former government's interest costs rose by over 400% from 460 million kina in 2012 to 2.1 billion kina in 2019. Every toya of that meant equivalent cuts to health, education, infrastructure, and services, and ultimately to the quality of life of our people. Paying off the former governments Expensive debt and replacing it with cheaper debt brings some specific benefits. Mr. Speaker, the Marape government's concessional financing approach means interest costs are now expected to fall by about 170 million kina in 2021. And we are going to use the availability of this money to top up the government's tuition fee subsidy. We know COVID-19 means our families are doing it tough. And by covering more of their school expenses, they will have more money available for food, shelter, clothing, transport, and income earning opportunities. Mr. Speaker, during the past three years, Health expenditure has increased by a very significant 370 million kina. In sharp contrast are the irresponsible death-dealing cuts in health spending of 117 million kina in the previous government's last three years. But I would like to make two important points. First, despite the 27% increase in core 
health funding during the past three years, we still need to monitor and release funds much more promptly to our hospitals in a more balanced way to avoid threatened closures, which really shouldn't be happening. Second, what did the previous government's health cuts actually do to this country? In shocking information released last week from the World Bank's World Development Indicators, PNG's child vaccination rates fell to be the worst in the entire world during his prime ministership. The worst in the world for child immunization of measles, diphtheria, whooping cough, and tetanus. The worst in the world for TB vaccinations. The previous government destroyed the entire vaccination system in this country. So we became the worst in the world. Mr. Speaker, the MAIFO predicts that the keener size of the economy is expected to be 1.5 billion kina larger than expected at the time of the budget. The non-resource sector overall is performing slightly more stronger than expected, with real growth increasing from 3.3 to 3.4%. I am particularly pleased that agriculture sector growth is expected to reach 4% in 2021, thanks to the Marape government's agriculture support programs, as well as higher commodity prices. The resource sector is doing better than expected in keener terms because of higher prices. But overall production is not as high as predicted because of delays in reopening Pogra, the fire affecting Octedi production and delays in the Simberi mine due to environmental concerns. Overall, the real GDP growth is expected to fall from 3.5 to 1.8%. However, and this is the advice from Treasury, despite the estimated reduction in our real growth rate, the strength of commodity prices means that the keener value of the economy grows from one from 81.6 billion kina in 2020 to 91.5 billion kina in 2021 this is a very pleasing increase of 12% up from 10% estimate at budget time the MAIFO document goes through the details. It will be on the Treasury website well before Independence Day. Some revenue items are up, reflecting the increase in commodity prices. Some are down in areas such as excise affected by lockdowns. Some expenditure items are up, especially the education spending mentioned earlier, as well as the ongoing issues of wages. Some expenditures are down, especially debt interest costs. Donor grants have been increased substantially by 413 million kina, reflecting the latest figures shown in the 2020 FBO. And this has been topped up further by the very welcoming grant budget support being provided by Australia. Thank you. Overall, both revenues and expenditures are estimated to have increased by about 680 million kina. The overall impact is that the budget deficit remains at exactly the same as predicted 
when the 2021 budget was presented. The path forward. Mr. Speaker, I now want to talk about the future. This government's new growth strategy reflects our economic philosophy of a more inclusive and sustainable economy, one that draws on all of our resources, both human and natural, renewable and non-renewable. We are the most culturally rich country in the world. Our forests are the lungs of the region. We are a country blessed with biological diversity. We have extraordinary untapped potential in our agriculture sector. We all know that. There is so much more we could do to make our economy more inclusive for women's participation. These are the reasons that our growth focus is on the non-resource sector. We are committed to lifting the real growth rate after allowing for inflation of the non-resource sector to at least 5% a year. Achieving this growth rate in non-resource GDP will also increase jobs by at least 10,000 a year. Mr. Speaker, we have a three-pronged approach to achieving higher growth rates, more growth-focused budgets, smarter support for businesses and families, and stronger institutions. More details will be provided in November and incorporated into the 2022 to 2027 medium-term budget strategy. Repair and reconstruction budgets. Mr. Speaker, we are also making important structural changes to the budgets. Growth requires investment, and focusing on investment is a key role of government. The Marape government is a government for productive infrastructure not the wasteful and unproductive spending by the previous government on roads to nowhere and fancy buildings that have fallen into disuse and disrepair. Our spending benefits the nation, not just a handful of cronies. Budget capital investment has increased from 10 billion kina under the previous two and a half years of the previous government to 18 billion kina in the same time period of the Marape government. A massive, a massive 8 billion kina or 80% increase. We will continue expanding the share of the budget going to capital investment as part of our budget repair and reconstruction process. This expenditure is focused on the PNG Connect program, the Marape government's signature policy to lift growth by linking farmers and businesses to markets around PNG and around the world. We are setting a standard for funding of core services that the total budgets for health, education and law and order will grow at least in line with inflation each year. We cannot afford to have the real value of our investment in these areas fall. Mr. Speaker, as part of the budget reconstruction work, I wish this government could be making even more investment in infrastructure, health and education, and support for MS, MEs and agriculture. But our hands have been tied behind our back. In 2021, the Marape government is being blamed 
for having to borrow 7.6 billion Kina to support our vital budget expenditure. But of this amount, don't blame the Marape government for having to borrow 2 billion Kina to pay off, to pay off the O'Neill government's interest bill, or 1.2 billion Kina to pay off the previous O'Neill government's arrears, or 1 billion Kina to pay off the previous O'Neill government's very, very expensive credit Suez loan. 4.2 billion Kina, well over half the 2021 borrowings is because of the former government, the former O'Neill government's debts and the former O'Neill government's expenses. A further 2 billion Kina in borrowing is because of the revenue due to COVID-19. So without the previous government and COVID-19, our budget deficit would be just 1.6 billion Kina, well under 2% of GDP. So stop blaming the Marape government for taking out loans to pay off the O'Neill government's loans. And stop blaming the Marape government for COVID-19. Just look into a mirror and blame yourself. Smarter business environment. The private sector is the key to driving growth, as we all know. One of the main things the government can do to help business is to create a supportive environment. This often means government getting out of the way, reducing red tape, fixing issues under the control of government. Businesses have stated that their greatest barrier is a lack of foreign exchange. We are implementing short and longer term actions to deal with this issue. Our better economic management means we have been able to attract billions in extremely concessional funding, which has massively lifted our net foreign exchange receipts and allowed a major clearance of outstanding foreign exchange orders in the June quarter. Indeed, one of the major reasons for our review of the Central Banking Act is to fix the foreign exchange problem created. When the previous government started manipulating monetary policy for their own government's interest, and in the process undermining the central bank and dragged BSP within the orbit of mismanagement, waste, and abuse. We are supporting new areas of growth through our economic philosophy focused on the agriculture, fishing, forestry, and other non resource sectors. In agriculture, there are practical actions such as the 111 million kina to local agriculture activities under our COVID 19 response. The Marape government has also created Kumul Agriculture. The previous government's excessive focus on the resource sector meant they created Kumul Petroleum and Kumul Minerals, but failed to create a body to help drive our agriculture potential. We are working at reinvigorating commodity boards, supporting the Livestock Development Corporation to grow our cattle industry, including to feed into oxen palm production, and supporting the coconut industry to shift into white copra and downstream processing of pure coconut oil. We are also being innovative and looking at new growth opportunities. 
This includes strong support for labor mobility programs, which could easily, easily generate more domestic income and net export receipts than even the PNG LNG project. Mr. Speaker, growth solutions require bringing COVID-19 under control. Countries that were success stories in supp suppressing the virus, such as Australia, Vietnam, and Taiwan, are now all moving to a vaccination solution. <clears throat> the Marape Basel government, working with international partners, will continue to support widespread voluntary vaccinations around the country and the choices of businesses to keep their workplaces safe. Stronger institutions. Mr. Speaker, strong institutions should support inclusive growth. We are working on a review of the Central Banking Act to improve the Bank of Papua New Guinea's role in monetary policy and regulation, which provides the vital framework for secure and productive investment. We are implementing a strong SOE reform program, working with international partners to improve power and water supplies around the country. Another key element for supporting inclusive growth. We are also working on other fundamental structural issues in our economy, such as having the Securities Commission support the development of a secondary financial market, which should even further lower the interest costs of government, securities, and open new financing options for local investments. We are working with our Independent Consumer and Competition Commission to support a stronger and more competitive economy. And I will be making further announcements on ensuring healthy competition in key economic sectors in coming weeks. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, the last two years have been the hardest for any government since independence. Dealing with the worst global economic crisis in 100 years would have been easier if we had not had to deal with the disastrous legacy left with us by the previous government. But this, despite these tough times, our actions have led to successes and achievements, as I've outlined today. The FBO demonstrates the steady hand of government in having domestic PNG expenditure come out at almost exactly the level predicted at the time of the 2020 budget. The 2021 MAIFO demonstrates that fiscal consolidation is proceeding exactly as planned. We have the major benefit of reduced interest costs, meaning we can now restore some of the earlier cuts in tuition fee subsidies and other spending forced upon us. But I know we must do more and that the people of Papua New Guinea expect us to do more. The Marape government is working for a more inclusive economy that leaves no one behind. We have a broad plan covering the continuing work of budget repair and reconstruction, working with our businesses to create a friendlier environment for sharing the goods and services, both domestically and internationally. We are continuing our work to modernize and reform our institutions. In the midst of the war on COVID-19, I am fully committed as treasurer in the Marape Basel government to continue this positive reform program for our people. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, ask him now, member Blong Yalibu uh, Pangia. But before you do that, you take note of the paper that was presented.
Thank you. Uh, thank you through uh, Mr. Assistant Speaker. Now, me talk of some, uh, me move also, you may take a note of paper, law treasurer. Now, me like debate, Lord Isla. You can go ahead. And I'm uh, thank you, uh, Assistant Speaker. And uh, I thank uh, the treasurer for uh, submitting uh, very late my FO statement to this Honorable House. Mr. Speaker, by law, this la, something must come up, I think, on 31st of July, I think, and the last day, or June, I think. But then close to now, some three or four people are going to land, now there's a right to come this. La. But it's always coming late, so it's not unexpected. Lo, this la kind of leader is broken, low blow country, blow you me. But uh, am I right? I report and report, so you can debate then. But, Mr. Speaker, uh, I thank the Chair for recognizing that, you know, this Honorable Treasurer is uh, becoming uh, used to name-calling, uh, but lack of substance. Uh, lack of substance because the data that is proceeding, uh, today's statement is without the, the actual uh, media economic output report. It's just a political statement uh, designed at, of course, the things that is uh, uh, good at. But let me say this. Some of the statements that he's making are quite misleading. I remember when we discussed the 2021 budget in November or so last year, uh, this honorable treasurer was the one who made a promise to, uh, in his budget papers that our economy will grow by close to 10% after a decline in the previous year by less than 3%, by 3%. So when we replied from this side of the house, we said that he'll be a miracle man, uh, turning this economy around by 13% in one year, in terms of the GDP growth in our country. Today is announcing to the house that that is not the case. There's further decline in GDP. He is predicting a further decline from a predicted 10% growth uh, down to 3.5 and further to 1.8. So, Mr. Speaker, the reality out there is that the economy is not in a good shape. We all know that. This is at the back of, despite the Treasurer's good attempts, it is close to three years that he, his government and him and the Prime Minister have been in government. And from day one, he has been continuously blaming without taking responsibility of his government's actions and decisions and lack of ability to grow the economy of our country, Mr. Speaker. Since 2002 to 2018-19, Mr. Speaker, Papua New Guinea has enjoyed economic growth, continuous economic growth within that time. Come 2019 to today, we've seen a sharp decline. The official numbers don't lie, Mr. Speaker. Whilst he's saying that we have borrowed money, yes, we have borrowed money. We've been able to repay that money. The concessional loans that the Treasurer is talking about is borrowing from IMF and IMF sanctioned loans from Australia and some of the friendlier countries. Mr. Speaker. In over close to 18 years, Papua New Guinea has never borrowed from IMF. IMF only lends to struggling economies, Mr. Speaker. The treasurer should be aware of that. When economy is struggling, this is the last resort that countries go to borrow money. And that is what the treasurer is doing. It's not because of international confidence that he's, he's alluding to. Mr. Speaker, what international confidence? There are no new investors in the country. In the border? On record. No government like Japan government or no government like Australia government has made direct budget support into a Papua New Guinea government budget. Mr. Speaker, that's on record. And so that's an evidence of direct confidence in the government budgeting process, Mr. Speaker. 
Contrary to Mr. O'Neill's, the Honorable O'Neill's approach in expensive short-term borrowing like credit issues, borrowing that is, is engaged upon, and our nation is faced to have a six-month turnaround at 8% interest and above. Mr. Speaker, when he says no government shows confidence, let me correct him. Australia landed at 0% interest direct to budget at a five-year grace period. Japan, one of the hardest nations to even support, budget landed at 0.01% at surface lending, all because of credibility of the budgeting process we've set up under tough times. Uh, Mr. Assistant Speaker, well, I take uh, note of the uh, note of the uh, point of order by the Prime Minister, point of order. Uh, but yeah. Mr. Speaker, he has got the right to respond. Right of respond. Correct. Uh, the former Prime Minister on a misstatement that the IMF is not is the least lender of choice. The point, as we all know, is that the least Preferred lender is always the commercial banks, international commercial banks, because they sell money at the highest price. So if you are running a nation, you're a government, you want to go out and borrow, you go to concessional lenders, which are traditionally the World Bank, the IMF, and the ADB. And when those three institutions don't want to give you money, then you go looking for money in the international uh, commercial banks such as Credit Suisse, the UBS, etc., That's where you get money at the highest price. So they are your last priority when you are looking for money you, to borrow. It's a misstatement to say that uh, the IMF is your last choice. They are your first choice. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Assistant Speaker, well, uh, I'm, I'm certain that the Prime Minister and... Uh, Minister for Petroleum, will have the opportunity to debate this issue when they speak. I've lost just three minutes while they've just been interjecting unnecessarily. But Mr. Speaker, I think I know what I am talking about, having dealt with some of these organizations, uh, especially IMF, uh, as Treasurer and as Prime Minister. And I can assure you that uh, what the Minister for Petroleum uh, is saying is incorrect. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this is where member countries, which PNG is a member of World Bank, member of IMF, go to when they need uh, rescue in their financial. And Mr. Speaker, uh, this is what is happening. Uh, point of order, point of order. The former Prime Minister and the former Treasurer must tell the Parliament and the country, don't be mischievous. You fail to go to these institutions offering much lower credit to nations who are member countries. You choose to go to crony-based fundraising sources that build up a lot of debt that this government is struggling to repay, including contracts that is outstanding. And I'll come to this point later on. How many contracts we've retired as a result of you issuing contracts without settling those credits? So let's not misconfuse and say, Pointing as if IMF is a second choice, low class lending source. No, they have always been available. Yet we choose not to go down this path and go and borrow from friends like UBS, friends like Credit Suisse, and we're caught in this quagmire of deficit that we're struggling to get out of. Mr. Acting Speaker, uh, Assistant Speaker, I don't know. Um, uh, whether who is telling the truth or not, but let uh, the record speak for itself. Uh, I challenge the Prime Minister and his good petroleum minister to make these statements outside the parliament and see how you can defend yourself calling people crony banks and cronies. Uh, you have instituted the inquiries, let the inquiries conclude. But, you know, it's uh, unbecoming of leaders to come and use their parliamentary privileges uh, to make this kind of statement. But let me say this, Mr. Speaker. The economy is not traveling well. There are more people out of jobs today than they were three years ago. There are more businesses closed down today than three years ago. I urge the treasurer and the minister to walk down the street and speak to the people. They will judge me at the elections day, and they will judge you too. 
They are not uh, uh, ignorant of the facts that are before us. Now we talk about massive infrastructure spending, 18 billion kina, that the treasurer is talking about. What infrastructure? Please name the one to this honorable house. 18 billion kina is not small money. We should be changing all the highways in the country and all the bridges and everything in the country. Most of them that are ongoing now are from previous governments. Our arrangements with ADB and all the other banks that we have borrowed money on, which are also concessional loans. So it's about time this government talks about its achievements and what it is doing to rescue the economy. You have had a decline in the economy from 2019 GDP. When we took over government in 2011, it was below, around about 40 billion in a GDP in our country. In eight years, we doubled it. These are official records, Mr. Speaker, to 84 billion kina. Yes, we borrowed money, but we built the economy. We provided jobs. Businesses' confidence was there. Investment, foreign direct investment was coming into the country. That is why businesses grow. In fact, in 2020, now the Treasury is proud that the GDP has declined. It has declined now through your final budget outcome, which says to 81 billion kina from 84. You are having a further decline in 2021. That's nothing to be proud of, Mr. Speaker. That's not nothing to be proud of. COVID economies around the world are growing. Just simply look at Australia, you know. A good member from Medan can have a look at Australia. And have a look, your favorite lender. Mr. Speaker, when you look at revenue, the revenue has declined, but we are keeping our expenditure levels very high. As budgeted, was, I think it was about 19 billion kina. No cuts in expenditure. When you have your revenue decline, no got money coming inside, you cut your expenditure as well. But no got projects money must go yet. We're spending money on projects that are ghost projects around the country. And everybody out there thinks that we are spending money on political projects. At least I can say I borrowed and I can go to any province in this country, including Kevin, where I steal the road from Blunsky, although Blunsky, I all the way down to Namatana from Kevin. ADB funded that. I can name projects. Point of order. I would prefer the member for Yalibupangi to uh, limit his comments on electorates to his own. Um, you're misleading the parliament and you are lying. You are a liar. The Boliminski Highway that was sealed in New Island started in 2005 by me when I was governor, not by the incumbent. Number two, the remainder of the Boliminski Highway was funded by an Australian government project. Not yourself, you provided not one toya. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to correct him. During our time, Mr. Speaker, we had development partners and uh, the treasurer is again, the treasurer is again, of course we borrowed point money order, from Australia. Point of ADB, order has been taken. ADB, you look at the funding of the Kavian Airport. That's ADB funded during our government. Point of order. I just want to make it clear to the parliament, we are not here to just fight for our own district. All right. The Australian government gift to the Bulominski Highway is a commitment made in the Lear Memorandum of Agreement. It does not belong to the treasurer. It ne never happened during his time. I force it to make it happen in Mr. Peter O'Neill's time. And I'd like to thank the uh, Prime Minister at that time. He activated that commitment under the Lear MOA. It did not happen in your time. So don't talk about the incumbent government. Talk about the 64 million you have not revealed to the people of New Ireland.
you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, all I was saying is that the revenues are coming down, and this uh, economy is affecting all of us, every citizen in this country. It's our equal responsibility to make sure that we turn this economy around and make sure it functions. The government needs to address new revenue measures, making sure that we build the confidence of our businesses that are shutting down because there is no business activity on the ground. Whilst we can sit here and pretend that that's happening, it is not happening. Mr. Speaker, when you have a physical deficit today of almost 7.3 billion of outcome in 2020 that the Treasurer is saying, 7.3 billion, that is the highest that we have ever recorded in a single year in the history of our country. In a single year. The second highest, Mr. Speaker, that he is uh, talking about, will be in 2021. 2021, we will have the second highest deficit of over 6 billion Kina, meaning that the, our economy will shrink again. So, Mr. Speaker, it is in our interest to make sure that we work together to cut in costs. Non-priority expenditure must stop immediately. The wages blowout must be addressed immediately, not next year, Mr. Speaker. The public service missionary is costing us too much money, and government is not addressing it. It's turning a blind eye. And Mr. Speaker, I think that the, the capital expenditures that they are talking about, this unnecessary issue of checks and broken ground, local double country, must stop. It must stop. Every toy that you spend adds up to be some, something of uh, an amount. People are so well, or you play right in check around land, people are so well. You know, something blow, right? But you know, Mr. Speaker, uh, some of us are missing out because we are on the wrong side of the uh, floor. Our DSIPs are not being paid. But Mr. Speaker, as long as it is saving our people, we don't mind. But where there are no outcomes, that's where we mind. A capital expenditure budget of 18 billion Kina that the Treasurer is talking about, it's not an insignificant amount. It is quite a large amount. And that kind of spending unnecessarily, just at the back of an excuse of COVID, will not get us anywhere. But Mr. Speaker, let me say this. Uh, the final uh, media my FO, uh, economic uh, fiscal outcome, will come out shortly. Uh, we will make uh, the comments uh, when we see the details of it. We are not going to engage in a, a, a name-calling uh, banter here today. But, Mr. Speaker, let me just say my conclusion on one matter, where the Treasurer mentioned about Bank of Papua New Guinea. Uh, he said that the governments of the past have continuously intervened or interfered with the performance of uh, the central bank. Uh, that is not quite true, Mr. Speaker. We have always respected the independence of the central bank. There is not one correspondence or one direction that governments have given in the past to the central bank because central bank is independently responsible for our monetary policy. And that must be respected. The current review that is going on is welcome, but the political appointees on that this must not be a politically driven review, Mr. Speaker. It is dangerous for the country, and it is dangerous for our economy. At least we have one independent body that is functioning, Mr. Speaker, managing our monetary policy. Government must stick to their physical policy. That is where your responsibility lies. Don't overstep your mark. And this is where we need to be careful about making sure that our economy is protected. Because if we don't grow our economy, and when we don't make sure that our economy continues to be performing, there will be no jobs, there will be no businesses, there will be no new investment in the country. And that is precisely what is happening today, Mr. Speaker. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to say a few words. Thank you.